All right, so we're gonna check out another new slicer. This is Kiss Slicer. Kiss stands for Keep It Simple. So Keep It Simple Slicer is pretty straightforward, although this can get pretty complicated if you choose to. Uh, on the first open here, it says no printer profiles found starting printer profile wizard. We'll go ahead and close that. And here is the printer profile wizard. And it's saying to enter values, choose a name for the printer profile, then click create. So I have one extruder and on the free version, you can only use one extruder. Um, what type of firmware do we have? Our dimensions here. Setting this up for the Ender 3. And we'll go ahead and type in Ender 3 here and hit Create Printer. Oh, nozzle diameter, where did I miss that, duh. We have no material profile, so we need to make a material profile. We are gonna use uh, PETG right off the bat, 230, bed temperature, we're gonna lower down to, let's do 65. Filament diameter is 1.75. It is extruder one. and create material, no styles. So we're gonna open the styles wizard and it's saying print type 20% infill, nozzle diameter. Uh, we'll call this standard. No support profiles. So um, basically we can create a bunch of different profiles and then use them depending on what we're printing it looks like. So. This could be a very good thing. Um, single extruder, same material as object. We're gonna go with a skirt. And we'll call this our standard profile. Welcome to Kiss Slicer. How would you characterize your 3D printing experience level? Let's go with intermediate, just to see what we get. All right, this is a pretty interesting interface. Um, it is left click to pan, right click to rotate. That's pretty standard. Let's go ahead and grab a model and pull it in here. Let's see, what do we got? How about this one? Uh, a little blocky. Some mesh errors as well. Move. Let's try something else. Let's try this Valentine's we're printing. We have a good profile that we've been printing this with uh, from Kira, so we can do a little comparison. Ender 3, standard, standard. Now, um, as I said, this is my first time opening this, so I don't really know exactly how to do this. So, auto rotate. Um. There's really no way to select this model here. Oh, there we go. You got to click on it over here. And let's see. I can't find any anything on rotation. I'd like to rotate it on this x-axis here and set it up. Okay, well, that's kind of cool. So I can increase the count pretty dramatically. And it just keeps cramming them on the bed. Apparently, according to this, all of these will fit. Um, we're gonna take that back down. And let's just do four. I like how it uh, reduces the travel between them, puts them as close as it can. All right, so it doesn't look like it's gonna let us stand them up. We should be able to print okay like this. This hole should should still come out. 
don't think it's going to require any support. So let's hit the slice button and see what happens. Saying slicing is going to take up a lot of RAM. Um, I'm not quite sure why I was getting that error. I might have to go in and adjust some settings in the software here. Um, it is still slicing. It is going to take a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video. We'll come back when it's all sliced. Okay, it is not done slicing yet, but a few thing I, things I noticed that I kind of like. This little line here, this blue plane is rising up through letting you know where it's slicing so there's no identification as to how long it has left to slice other than this and it took me a minute to notice that this was slowly rising up through the layers the other thing i want to point out is that these guys don't have a logo or a polished icon or button down here so um uh it, things look beautiful and those are small details that I really don't think are a big deal, but some people may see that and think that it's jank software. I prefer to slice these models here, throw it on the printer, and let the models speak for themselves. So we will judge this slicer based entirely on how the models come out and not some of the things we think it is lacking. Um, there's not much that I see that's missing. Like I said, I couldn't find that rotate, and I do plan to dig around a little bit. Uh, before this video is over, I will let you know if in my travels I happen to find it and where you can find it for yourselves. But for now, uh, it looks like we are just about to the top of our model, so it should be almost done slicing, which means we'll be able to transfer the file. And I'm not quite sure yet how that process is going to happen either, if I'm just going to be able to export to SD card or if I have to save it and then move it. But we will find out here shortly. And as you can see, it has completed slicing our model into layers. Now it is going through and assembling the G-code. And you can see that in the bottom green plane that is slowly rising through the model. This process so far has taken about three minutes. And that's quite a bit of time for something that is relatively simple. I mean, this is basically a cube with a couple of curves on it. So um, that's a little bit disappointing. But like I said, we will leave it to overall model quality to determine whether or not this slicer is worth it. The interesting thing to me about slicers is we spend so much time with a model on our printer hoping that we don't have any problems and that things will come out and yet we expect our slicers to slice that model into perfect g-code in no time flat. So it doesn't bother me taking a little bit of extra time to slice a model if I end up with a better model uh, but at this moment that remains to be seen so for now, I'm going to pause this video again, and once the green plane gets a little bit higher, closer to the top, uh, I will pop back in here because I'm curious to see what it's going to tell me for uh, statistics like time, amount of filament, and things of that nature, and where they will be displayed, whether or not they will be uh, simple enough, easy to access, that I can just see them without having to dig for them. So. Um, I uh, will pause the video one more time right here. All right, and our model has turned green here. As you can see, we are all done slicing. Now, if we go over here and hit models and paths, it should update with our newly sliced path. There are a couple other things that are showing up here, and we will go over those in just a second. And there you have it. You can see our paths. Let's go ahead and select just the paths. And this is the very top layer, so we can scroll down through. Curious, oh, that's the hole in the middle. It looks like it's printing this solid and not really doing uh, an infill, which we'll have to look into as well. It says it's gonna use 8.724 meters of filament, and that's quite a bit. Um, and it's not really giving us a time. The only time I can find is down here where it says hours, hours, minutes, minutes. And it's saying 498.21. So I'm hoping it's not going to take 498 minutes to print these four little models. But let's throw it on the printer and we will find out. It does give us a monetary value of 
cents, um, which is strange because I didn't put in the value of the filament that we're using, but there are a lot of profile settings in here that we can use. Let's go ahead and check a couple of them. We'll make that bigger. Oh man, it really won't let me move that. I don't like that. You stop it. Uh, we're going at 50 millimeters per second. That's pretty standard. That's okay. Skin thickness, just less than two of our nozzles. That's okay. There'd be a little overlap there holding it together. Layer thickness. That's interesting. Infill is set at 20%, but it doesn't seem to be looking like it has it. Well, we will print this and see what happens. Now we have this handy save button available up here. Let's go ahead and click that. And it is a G code file. Let's save it to my need to print. And Valentine stage two times four. That works for me. I am waiting for one little heart to finish up on the, let's see, on the Ender 3 here. And I can give you a little preview of what this guy's gonna look like now. This here is one of these hearts that's printing away on the Ender 3. We sliced this in Kira, and you'll be seeing more of this as the day goes on, and we get closer to Valentine's Day because we're doing a couple videos on it as well. But that's gonna be the end of this section. Let's jump over and see how this slice actually came out and whether waiting this, uh, it says it took, let's see, go back. It says it took like 996 seconds so a few minutes i mean it was a good amount of time to slice so um let's see if it's worth the wait all righty then so i went and pretty much cleaned up most of my house smoked a cigarette and came back and tried to close kiss slicer here and it gave me an error that said please let export of g-code finish before closing and that's when I noticed that it is slowly exporting it and the file is not done yet. Now it's been about 20 minutes since I've been over here and it's at 8 kilobytes. It says up here uh, 2,928.9 megabytes and this number is changing as it's sliding through the layers here. Um, but I'm not quite sure what's taking so long. Granted, this software's last stable update was 2018, but I did expect a lot better than this according to the list that I had found it on. So I'm pretty disappointed at the, at the moment. Um, I actually started another print on the Ender 3 because I get the feeling that it'll be at least an hour before this is completed and I don't want to waste the print time. So we will eventually finish this process, but at this point it is up to the slicer and the 3D printing gods. So we will see how long it takes and I'll report back to you. All right, so the G-code finally finished downloading and look at the size of this file. It is almost five gigs. So this is not really a viable option for slicing. Since we have it, we are gonna throw it on the printer and see what happens, but at this point, uh, unless this model comes out the most pristine and perfect model I've ever seen, I am not going to be able to recommend this slicer. Alright, well we're going to go ahead and call this a fail. I actually can't make enough room on my micro SD card to transfer this file. Um, I'm using an 8 gigabyte SD card. It's telling me that the file is just over five or just under 5 gigs and it simply will not transfer. now. Um, I printed some pretty large models and the largest G-code file that was on this was a 10 hour print and it was about, well, almost a gig. So uh, that tells me that the G-code in this file is going to be printing for probably a couple of days and I can print one of these per hour so I don't see a point in trying to print four of them in a couple of days. Uh, that's going to be the end of this video. It's very disappointing, and I apologize that we couldn't actually get a model printed, but this slicer is just undeniably broken. It's probably the reason it hasn't been updated since 2018. Um, the slicing takes forever. The G-code files are huge. I had high hopes for high potential for this, and uh, I'm just extremely let down. Fortunately, there are plenty of other free slicers to try out there. If you're looking for an alternative to Kira, I recommend Matter Control 2.0. It is probably 
my favorite slicer, even though it's not quite as popular as Kira. It does have some Tinkercad-like elements in it, and you can find a video on that on my channel. All you have to do is pop over there and type in Matter Control in the search box, and you should find a few of them. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Technivorous. I'm going to end this video here, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell for notifications for when we put up future videos. Thanks, guys. As always, this channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. As always, thank you. I'll put a video up right here that you can check out for more of our stuff. And if you're still here and you haven't already, why don't you click right here and subscribe to the channel.